Hey everyone, it's Chrissy from Everyday Survival Gear and today I bring you the review of the Mi Boxer C412. Uh, basically a uh, fast charger that is also smart too. Uh, this is it here. Um, its claim to fame is that it can charge uh, lithium ion cells at 3 amps per channel. So that's 12 amps in total. So if you've got any big batteries like 26650s, uh, you can charge them at 3 amps, uh, which means charging time should be around about 2 hours, maybe a little bit over for your average uh, 26650 cell. So yeah, this is it here. Um, we'll do the usual, we'll run through what it comes with first. I'll just put the camera up a little bit. So obviously you get the Mi Boxer C412, like so. Um, you get a friggin' laptop battery supply how awesome is this now we'll read this and we'll see what it says 65 watts you get the 65 watt ac to dc adapter that's friggin awesome that's just to show you how much power that it puts puts out um you get one of these uh figure eight cables so this one's a usa one no use to me but you do get it in the kit uh, and you get the instruction booklet, Mi Boxer, C412. Alright guys, so we'll have a look around the design, and then we'll talk about the features. Um, so, it's kind of designed like the old C4, in the sense, it's kind of more plain looking uh, than the uh, C2, 4000 and 6000. But it still does uh, retain some of those curves that you find on the C2, 4 and 6000. So, you know, you got your little finger grooves here, which makes it easier to uh, fit your fingers in and to grab your soles. So what soles do I have here? Like so. Um, and you can also see it does have the USB out um, like on the C2 6000. Um, USB out on the Mi Boxer C412 only works from slot 4. So I can put cells in all these other slots and it's not going to work. It only works from slot 4. Not sure why Mi Boxer went that route. I'm sure they got their reasons. But um, yeah. So, um, yeah, um, I do find kind of like um, fitting 26650 side by side is a little bit harder than on the other chargers because the gaps in between the cells are not huge. So I can't get my fingers in between because uh, the um, gaps are filled. Uh, so, yeah, so design wise, that's the uh, DC in up the top there. Uh, USB out, 5 volts at 1 amp. We'll test that in a minute. Um, you can see, you know, it's got the uh, sliding rails here, so all the rails slide up and down. They move fairly easy, but they offer um, ample uh, force going up and down. So they'll hold pretty much even your smaller size cells. Um, what cells do I have here? I've got ones that I pulled out of a uh, CB radio. Uh, just to show you that um, NIMS don't actually work on USB out. So that's on slot 4 there, and NIMS don't work. So you can see, you know, the cell sits in pretty tight, like tight tight enough. You can't really move it around much. So it offers ample force. Nice springy action there. Um, you can see this does actually have the uh, little metal tabs here. Um, that's for uh, the temperature sensor. So it does have a temperature sensor built in, which is fairly important. Uh, if you're charging cells at 3 amps because you don't want them to get too hot. If we have a closer look here, you can see it does have little uh, bumps, uh, ridges that stick up. So you can pretty much get contact with your small cells and all your large cells. Um, the flat top 26650s are notoriously hard to fit in. Um, they do fit in here, but they do take a little bit of fiddling around. So I have noticed that. Um, and on the back side, not sure how well you guys can see that. But there are a few little ridges there, or bumps I should say, uh, which will help with placement of your larger cells. Um, like the um, C2 6000, this one also only has one button, so only one button on the uh, C412, and that controls pretty much all of your controls. Only things you can change on the uh, C412 is the uh, slots. So you can choose between slot 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, you push and hold, and that will allow you to change the charging current. So that's pretty much all the options that you get. Yeah, so talking about features, um, you know what's funny too, like people, they read my reviews on uh, BLF, and I say, you know, when I try and squeeze it, it doesn't make any sounds. But look at this, I'll squeeze it. Yeah. 
that's a lot of force there. Um, and it hasn't snapped in half and it doesn't even make squeaks. Like even if I apply a lot of force, you know, you can see how much force is going there. It doesn't make any sounds. It's a really uh, solid built charger. Um, that's what I found with the um, whole Mi Box range so far. The first D4, it was okay. Probably wasn't as good as these ones, but it's still a really good charger. Um, I would rate it like build quality wise better than my Nightcore um, D4, but that is from 2014. So I don't know if things have improved from then, but yeah. Um, so we'll talk about features now. So basically, uh, the C412 is, co is compatible with lithium ions or 4.2 volts uh, NIMS and nickel cadiums. So basically, um, you can't charge lipos on this, so no uh, LIPO cells. So no, um, I think they're 3.6 volts, aren't they? 3 or 3.6 volts. Um, you can't charge them. Um, you can't charge 4.35 volt cells. Technically speaking, like you can charge 4.35 volt cells. I know I'm contradicting myself, but um, they'll cut off a little bit early, so the termination will be a little bit early, um, and you won't get a uh, full battery ca ca capacity, um, like if you use the proper 4.35 volt charger. So um, yeah, so it charges NIMS and nickel cadiums. Um, basically, it uses the um, same sort of um, charging uh, as the rest of them, the same al algorithms. It uses uh constant current and constant voltage for lithium ions and pulse charging for NIMS. So that's what you get on um, all of these mini boxer chargers. Alright guys, I'll just turn the uh, charger on while we're talking. It would give you guys something better to look at than uh, a blank charger. So uh, we'll keep on continuing with the uh, features. So it's uh, the C412 can charge all different types of cylindrical rechargeable lithium ions, NIMS and nickel cadiums. So basically, um, you can charge pretty much all of your usual standard cells, um, anywhere from smaller size, um, something like a 10340, all the way up to 26650s. So um, I'll put on one of these old cells. I'll put on the uh, cell that I just had in here. And we'll see how this charges. Because this was uh, pulled out of some old CB radios that I had. So it's not the best quality cell. There we go, that's it. Hopefully there's no PWM on the screen. Um, our light today is being supplied by the uh, Convoy L6 because I'm trying to drain some 26650 so you guys can see the three amps that work. Um, so it does have the power bank function as I've already said using lithium batteries. Uh, only works from slot 4. Um, so it's got a maximum 3 amp um, charge per channel. So you can charge you know, 3 amps, 3 amps, 3 amps, 3 amps. So a maximum charge of 12 amps. Um, you know what, like that is a lot of power to be putting out, um, so the charger will get hot. Uh, I haven't had any issues with mine overheating, but the problem is I don't own that many 26650s, I probably only own about 10, and I haven't had time to like go outside and play with my lights to drain them all the way. So I've had two big cells charging and two smaller cells charging, um, probably my total current all up was about 8 amps. And I didn't have an issue with it getting too hot. I haven't really had a chance to test that 12 amps yet fully. Um, it's also got manual current select. So we'll hold here. And you can see the current is flashing there. So we'll turn the current. Oops. Push and hold I think. And then I should be able to put the current up. And we'll charge it. We'll charge it at half an amp for these NIMS. Uh, high precision reference voltage source calibration. Um, yeah, basically mumbo jumbo. Um, my cells did terminate at about 4.2 volts. Um, after leaving them for a few minutes, they dropped down to about 4.19. Um, so it's pretty much it cuts off at exactly where it should. Uh, automatic stop charging when battery is fully charged. Well, you'd hope so. So it does automatically uh, discontinue the charging cycle once the battery is full so you don't have to worry about the batteries overfilling. Alright guys, so the Mi Boxer C412 does have reverse polarity protection uh, and it's also got uh, short circuit protection so we'll flip down around one of these so-called safer cells we'll put it in upside down error on channel 2 so yeah I'm seeing a little bit of PWM on my camera I'm not sure if that's from the um, L6 that's giving us light or something else. 
Yeah, I think the PWM is just coming from this uh, screen here on this. Um, so basically, the C412 automatically adapts to input power. So let's just say if you've got a car charger or you have an, an adapter that doesn't put out 60 odd watts and you plug it in, um, it will auto automatically adapt the charging currents uh, to that AC to DC adapter that you're using. Uh, so basically, it's got an intelligent battery temperature control function. Uh, to wrap it up, so if you put a cell in here uh, and you charge it at 3 amps and it becomes too hot, uh, it will either lower the current or terminate the the uh, charging cycle altogether. So that's what the intelligent control temperature control does. Um, basically, automatically detects the battery and displays state of charge on the screen. So we can see from the screen here, I uh, plugged in the NIM and it's saying NIM nickel cadmium. Uh, it's 89% full, 27 degrees, uh, and it's got the time charging, the milliamp hours input. Uh, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, sorry, I'll start again. That's the voltage of the cell. That's the internal resistance of the cell. And that's the charge current there. So it's charging at 250 milliamps. All right, guys, as I was just saying, uh, basically it automatically detects internal resistance and battery capacity. There's no uh, need to, um, you know, pull out the cell and then do it again or to put it on some special kind of uh, charge discharge cycle it automatically reads out for you um so four fully independent slots supports charging of two different battery types so you know you can technically it's three different battery types it's um lithium ions nims or nickel cadmiums so you know all the slots are fully independent so if i put a lithium cell in here ah my cat phone's right there it's a bit hard because my phone is like just here so it supports small capacity battery charging. So thanks to the manual um, current select, uh, you can actually charge your smallest lithium ion cells that you own. Um, basically when charging small cells, um, I would suggest to uh, pretty much se select manual current yourself. I had in um, 14500s in here and um, they were charging at 1.2 amps, which is pretty much way too much. But because they were IMR cells, the internal resistance reading was fairly low. So um, in all these uh, chargers that are on the market, the automatic charging works by um, the internal resistance m measurement. So the lower the internal resistance, the higher the charge current it will try and put into the cell. So if we have a look now, this is on auto setting. Uh, it's reading very high re re resistance on this cell and it's only inputting uh, 100 milliamps. So why does this cell read such high, high, high resistance? Um, one, basically it's not a very good cell. It's an Orca Torch cell that is rebranded from a no-name cell. And it's also got a protection circuit on it which adds um, extra resistance in the cell itself. So, you know, these are not high drain cells. If I plugged in a high drain cell, you would see the uh, difference. So I can put in an old laptop pool. This Sanyo is about seven years old now. Um, and we'll see what kind of internal resistance it has. It's got no protection circuit on it So it should have a lower internal resistance reading than the uh, Orca torch So you can see it's already full, but it's only got 126 milliohms of internal res resistance So that um, safety circuit does add quite a bit of internal resistance um, Supports lithium-ion battery re repair function. So if you do have a protection circuit that trips like on one of these cells um just plug it in and it will reset it for you and continue charging. Uh, not all chargers do that. I've got a lot of chargers that won't actually charge the cell once once the protection is tripped. Uh, so it does support DC 12 volt car charging mode. Uh, made of PC fire retardant material. Excellent heat dissipation and circuit design. Uh, three year warranty. Alright, so right now you can see, you know, all four slots are independent. So we can cycle around slots like so. Uh, all got different temperature readings, so this one is a NIM, NIM, lithium, lithium, uh, all um, they're displaying different characteristics. This one's 25% full, this one's, I can't even read that one, 98% full, this one's 94, this one's 99% full. Um, so basically, I already said that it can charge uh, lithium ions 4.2 volts, but basically it can charge all the chemistries. IMR, INR, and ICR. Um, 
Yeah, so pretty much IMR and ICR are fairly, uh, sorry, INR are fairly high drain cells. So that's good to know. Um, we'll have a look around the LCD display, even though I've already shown you guys. Um, we'll just run through what everything looks like again. Don't know if you guys really need to see it, but might as well. So um, this is the channels here. So you've got channel 1, 2, 3, 4. So obviously, you know, you can select them differently. Um, this displays which cell is in charge. So it, it, either it be a NIM, nickel cadmium, or lithium. So you can see lithium ion, 4.2 volts. Uh, this is the temperature here, so 27 degrees. 31 degrees from this um, from this um, NIM here. Um, these cells are a little bit weird. They've been overcharged, I think, in the past. And um, it's not really the best uh, cells now. But the uh, eternal resistance isn't that bad. So if we just have a look here, this display. So um, that's the uh, charge current. That's the voltage of the battery. And that's the internal resistance from um, channel 1. So if you were to push channel 2, it'll change this stats here. So that's the internal resistance. That's the charge current. And that's the voltage of battery 2. And you go on. So that's the uh, voltage, internal resistance, and uh, charge current from channel 3. And um, down below here, it displays uh, the capacity of the battery, battery, as in the sense that it, it's it's displaying how much it's actually charged. So uh, the charger is saying that this is 94% full on slot 3. So slot 4 is 99% full. Uh, that's the charge time there. And that is the milliamp hours that have been put into the battery. And that is the charging display icon there. Um, so basically... <clears throat> um, because you get the uh, quick charger function with this charger, you don't actually get any um, really smart charging options. They're all kind of automatic. So if you did want to tell the battery capacity of a cell, you would have to manually drain it yourself and then put it in here. Um, and that's going to give you a fair indication anyway of um, how much capacity the battery actually has. Because what most chargers do is that they'll charge the cell up first. And then they'll drain the cell and they'll recharge it to give you the capacity. So, you know, just make sure that the that, that it's uh, fully drained and you charge it back up. And that'll give you a rough estimate of um, the battery capacity that you're charging. One more function that might not be uh, too important to some people. But um, lithiums and nims do actually charge at different rates. So you can select the manual current yourself and we'll run through that now. So we'll reset it. So for a NIM or nickel cadmium, you can charge it at uh, 100 milliamps, 200 milliamps, 300 milliamps, 400 milliamps, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10. So 1,000 milliamps. So 1 amp. For uh, lithium cells, it's a little bit different. Um, you can either charge it at 100 milliamps. Whoops. So you've got 100 milliamps as an option, 200 milliamps, 300 milliamps, then it skips to 500 milliamps, then 800 milliamps, then 1 amp, then 1.5 amps, then 2 amps, 2.5 amps, and 3 amps. That's your charging options there for lithium ion cells. Alright guys, so I just pulled my um, 26650 little colors out of the um, Convoy L6 to show you guys. Um, basically, I put it on automatic mode um, and um, we'll see how it goes. So right now it's reading um, slot 3 is uh, 25 milliohms of internal resistance. It's charging at 3 amps. The cell is at 32 degrees Celsius and 4.01 volts. And the charger has already in input uh, 40 milliamps. So you can see how fast it's going. And then slot 4 is at 32 degrees, uh, charging at 3 amps, 4.01 volts, uh, 26 milliamps of internal re resistance. So you can see the internal resistance between the two cells is fairly similar. Only 1 milliohm of difference. Um, and... Um, the current put put in is actually quite a lot. It's already up to uh, 50 milliamps, and it's been charging for only one minute. So you can see the cell t the cell temperature, that cell one does raise, but it isn't too bad. 
um you know it's a little bit fidgety to get these soles to work because the um f flat tops so you just kind of have to make it work um i kind of uh, had to fiddle around with the um back back end a bit to get it to fit but uh once it fits uh it you can see it works just fine um so as i was saying before you know uh, there's not the most room you can fit your fingers in fairly easy like so and pull it out but there is actually no gap be between the cells i would have liked to see me boxer i'll kind of put this out a little bit more i would have liked to seen me boxer uh make it so you know you can fit your fingers the whole way in between um like on the uh c2 6000 you can do that all right guys i just want to run over um the um charging at three amps is pretty high current even for a 26650 like it's acceptable for most of them if they are a high drain cell um, but it's still important to always watch your cells as they're charging um, anyway but the um, Mi Boxer C412 does offer you the um, intelligent temperature control as I already ran over before but I just want to break it down more so basically if the cell reaches 60 degrees Celsius the charger will reduce the charging current in order to prevent damage to the cell uh, if the battery temperature reaches more than 70 degrees, the charger will stop charging battery and prompt error. So error will come up on the screen. Um, pretty much, you don't really want your cells to be over, I think, 60, 70 degrees is pretty much max, I think. That might even be too high. So um, it's always important to watch your cells as they're charging, especially, you know, if you've got four big cells charging at 3 amps on here. That's going to 3 amps each. 12 amps total that's going to generate a lot of heat all right so now we'll look at the power bank function which only works from slot 4 so you can see um, it offers you the temperature of the cell is still the displayed on screen uh, that's the amps out it says uh, USB and slot 4 but you can't change the slot anyway um, basically the USB out is good for 5 volts at 1 amp um, so when the battery is not in use long enough the LCD turned itself off uh, just like the um, last last time so if you don't use this for 20 seconds the uh, screen will turn off same as on the C2 6000 um, also if the battery is going flat the LCD will flash three times and then turn itself off uh, we'll plug in a uh, little load so push slot so you can see out right now it's at 5.14 volts uh, we'll put in a one amp load using my dummy tester so at one amp it stays pretty much above five five volts it's at about five volts almost at one amp it's at 900 milliamps of discharge current uh, and on the screen here you can see it says 0 0.86 amps so pretty much 900 milliamps uh, and that's pretty much all that the um, dummy load is is pulling. Give it a few minutes. So it does also monitor the um, temperature. Um, I don't think the um, C2 6000 actually did do that. Alright, I just pulled the dummy load off there. It's getting a little bit too hot. Alright guys, um, yeah, so pretty much the uh, review is done. I'm pretty sure I showed you guys everything that there is to see um you know if you got a lot of big cells it's a great charger um it's a good all round charger you know even if you own a lot of small cells too because the manual current s selection gives you the option to charge pretty much any type of cell which is pretty in important you know i've got a lot of 14 500s and quite a few 10 440 lights um so it's fairly important for me to be able to charge all those cells um you know it gives you a uh, uh, lot of options not a lot of chargers out there it can actually charge at three amps per per slot um so it's got that above most chargers you know um having this one charger is equivalent to having uh three opus or little carla chargers um because they only charge at one amp per slot uh, and also, you know, it does have the milliamp hour counter. You just got to manually drain the battery. It tells you the internal resistance. The internal resistance function works as well as on any other charger. It's it's not perfect. Uh, it's just there. So as a reference guide, um, this does have the added um, option of telling you the temperature of a, of a cell uh, for when you're fast charging them, which is also handy. 
So yeah, uh, pretty much all in all, the uh, C412 is a great all-round charger. Alright guys, this has been Chris from Everyday Survival Gear, bringing you the review of the Mi Boxer C412. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.